Hello folks and welcome. Fedora 38 workstation. This is actually an upgrade. And I'll talk about that um, process uh, in a little bit here. But uh, there's uh, quite a few changes that have been done from the previous version. So I'm using the workstation, which uh, the default desktop environment is GNOME. And in this case, GNOME 44, you can actually see that on the screen. So I'll get into all the particulars. I'm going to actually give you information from two different places regarding this uh, distribution, one from Fedora Magazine and the other one for DistroWatch. And if you have never uh, seen this distribution and don't are undecided on what desktop, for instance, uh, I'll walk you through that process also. I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 today. A lot of people have asked in the previous um, site that I used to have and also this new one is, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard to read stuff. It always is with text, depending on what your screen resolution is set for. And there are a lot of different devices out there. If you're watching my videos on a mobile device, they're normally too small. I recommend uh, larger screens or large screen or at least as large as possible for you. So, but you can also change the screen resolution yourself by hitting stop on your player and look for that little gear symbol and click on it and see what your resolution is set for. There's a setting usually toward the bottom, just as an FYI. All right, with that said, none of my videos are less than two minutes. They all have timelines and chapters though. And I encourage that you read my about section and also go investigate the community tab if you wanna do keyword searches on my 100 plus videos. Now I'm going to close this box and say welcome. I'll talk about this mouse pointer toward the end of this video if you're curious. So let's click that gear symbol and open up the about section. The reason I opened this up is not only to just to let you see what I have for hardware, but I wanted to point out the windowing system. Now a lot of people don't know this, but the standard um, version that comes up with Fedora is Wayland. I'm using X11 only for one reason, because I'm using open source software to record this video called Simple Screen Recorder. And Simple Screen Recorder does not work in Wayland. It does in X11 though. And it's pretty simple to switch between those two. You just log out and then click on your username and then you'll see a magic gear appear down here toward the bottom right side of your screen on your login screen. And you click that and you have multiple selections. And one of them is X11 or the Xorg desktop instead of the Wayland desktop, which is usually the default selection. Anyways, you can see the Linux kernel. And um, so there is some changes that have been made in here. And uh, the mouse pointer cursor size is located in here, not the selection. You'll need to use another tool for that, and I'll talk about that toward the end. Now you can see what I'm using for size of, of the pointer. Just trying to get your attention. So let's talk about um, the basic stuff first. After you um, upgrade, and uh, how, fast, how, how long did it take me to upgrade from the previous version? Actually, it was within a 20-minute window with my hardware. And um, I did a first regular update, then I did an upgrade. And that process again was less than 20 minutes and there was two reboots, which went rather smoothly. The uh, filing system for this is BTRFS. Okay. But uh, more importantly, I'm, this is, since this is an upgrade, I have some additional stuff installed. If you haven't seen my video on RSync or GRSync, yeah, you may want to go take a look at that, if you, especially for if you're doing personal backups. I discuss how to do that uh, rather easily to USB devices aka USB hard drives and or thumb drives or sticks. But anyways, typical menu. And then of course you can do searches. All right, so simple screen recorder is what I'm using to record this video. Okay, so your software center, I'll talk about the repos first, where's the stuff coming from? And I'll go through this rather quickly because it bores some people to look at this stuff. But um, Hopefully you know what flat packs are because there's two versions in here. Fedora has their own and then flat, um, flat hub is also in here. So you can always back this video up if I'm going too fast for you. So again, this is not a cup of tea for everybody when they look at information like that. 
So your updates are done in here. And as, I, as you can see, I have one already, even though, though I updated this yesterday. Now we'll deal with that one later. You have installed, which you can trash can it here, or you can trash can it here. Then you have explore, then you have searches. It's pretty simple to do stuff. I'll click on this one that's not installed, and I have some options. Before I hit install, I can also look at the drop down arrow. Now you can see that there's two Flatpak versions here, the flathub.org, which a lot of Linux distros use, and also the fedoraproject.org has its own Flatpak. And if you're not that familiar with Fedora in general, Fedora is owned by Red Hat. Red Hat is very large in the server community. RPM stands for Red Hat Package Manager or Mac Package Management. So Red Hat Package Manager, Flatpak, and flat pack on this particular piece of software, for instance. So I have three choices. The one that's defaulted is this one. All right, let me close that. I already showed you the menu. Uh, the dock is customizable also, and uh, some basic icons. So let's go take a look at some information um, about what, um, well, Fedora Magazine says about this distribution called Fedora 38. And I'll talk about the spins in a second. Spins are different desktops. So they got a new website. And again, I'll talk about the spins, which are different versions of desktops in a second here. Desktop improvements. The number one thing that I saw after I upgraded is it shuts down faster and reboots faster. That should be a welcome uh, thing for anyone who is running a fairly modern desktop nowadays. Sysadmin improvements, microDNF, as far as the default package manager. I didn't have a, um, a full run on this one because I've only installed this since yesterday. So, but anyways, I'm just showing you some of the highlights on fedoramagazine.org. But I did notice over 20 to 30 different updates. Okay, so you can also find information on DistroWatch and on, you can also find the distribution there also. This may be too large for you, so let me reduce that down a little, something more manageable. And um, I'll find the blurb on Fedora. So you can read the, the release information from 4.18 on DistroWatch and you can also get DistroWatch as a link through my YouTube site if you're a subscriber. So Fedora team announced the Fedora 38, which again is uh, GNOME 44 for their workstation. However, you may be interested in other distributions or work um, desktops, I should say, desktops. But again, this is definitely noticeable. And I actually tested that out by rebooting a couple of times because <laughs> I was uh, just curious after the upgrade and it still held very, uh, let me put it this way. It shuts down rather quickly and reboots rather quickly. End the subject on that one. All right, so if you are wanting to use DistroWatch to get to Fedora, if you've never used their distribution, then I would suggest probably just go to the page head ranking area and click on number five. That's a, as of today's date. I'm not sure when you're gonna watch this video, but it's currently April 21 of 2023. A lot of people watch these videos I know, later. So anyways, um, too small? Let me blow that up for you. How's that? Hopefully that's better. So Fedora. Fedora is owned by Red Hat. A lot of people don't know that. Red Hat is very large in the server community. But if you download the workstation for your home use, you'll get the GNOME desktop. However, if you're not interested in the GNOME, you want something different, then you can try Plasma or XFCE or LXQT if you're looking for some lightweight stuff. GetFedora.org is their website. So let's go look at this new website. Or at least let's look at the, uh, the new version of this website. Huh? And it's 38 for the workstation. And you can download that directly from here. Okay, if you're looking for spins, then we can scroll down a little bit further and hit learn more. Let's see what kind of different types of desktops in addition to the GNOME that you can download. There is the KDE Plasma. Again, a lot of times 
plasma desktops in general will require a little bit more hardware on your computer than a standard XFCE desktop, for instance. But speaking of, there's XFCE right there. LXQT, lightweight. Mate, CompWiz, desktop, and Cinnamon. Also uses uh, a traditional GNOME user interface with some bells and whistles. LXDE. SOAS. I3. Budgie. And Sway. So you see this, it says Wayland based tiling window manager. Keep in mind too is this GNOME desktop also has uh, it actually natively boots up in Wayland. I am in the X11. And why am I in the X11 again? Because I'm filming using Simple Screen Recorder. But you can see all the different types of desktops that they have. Okay. And uh, more importantly, just trying to give you an overview, a quick overview of this upgrade. Again, the upgrade was less than 20 minutes. I did see a noticeable difference on the shutdown and reboot. And um, I think I'm just going to talk about the file manager and, and go from there. So I um, already talked about the um, software, the GNOME project software, easy to navigate, easy to install. You just, uh, you know, you got choices at how you want to download stuff. The file manager, um, you can, um, I'm going to turn off my head for a second. You could resize the icons my way. If you haven't seen my videos on the file manager, it's pretty simple to do what I'm doing here. Or you can just do it the old fashioned way. But uh, speaking of hidden, so if you're interested in this kind of mouse pointer, just create create yourself a folder called dot icons and dump your mouse theme in here. I'm using radioactive. That's the name of this mouse theme. And you can watch any of my videos that have to do with the installation of mouse, uh, mouse cursors or, or mouse themes, mouse pointers. You can watch any of those videos and it'll basically show you how to install that for just about any distribution. But they need to be installed in here. Now you normally don't pick the mouse pointer here though. Unlike some other distributions um, have different ways to actually activate these things. You activate these um, over here. So you have to have tweaks installed. If you don't have it installed, you can install that rather easily through your software store. But uh, there's a shortcut to it actually. So tweaks is uh, used for many things. In my case, I'm using that to pick my mouse cursor. This is the only one that comes installed on your distribution. I added this in the dot icons folder. That's why I'm capable of picking it. What is else in here is window tile bars, like the buttons over here. If you don't want them on or do want them on, they're selectable in here. And if you wanted to move the set of buttons over to the other side, you can do that rather easily. There's other options in here, folks. Now the size of the pointer is uh, done through your settings. And again, this menu has been revamped in this version. So in this case, you would hit accessibility scene and the, not the large text size. I'm sorry. Let me turn that back off. Cursor size. It was right below it. So this would be the smallest that this one can produce. And that's the largest. I used that one just to, to get your attention here. And it's easy to point at things so using a yellow one instead of the other color, at least in my, my view. But more importantly, I think I'm done, folks. So, so give that uh, a try if you're interested in Fedora. Again, you don't have to use the GNOME workstation. You can use other spins. In other words, other desktops. Thank you for watching.